So I converted to Islam about like three years ago. Sorry, I'm very nervous. So. Yeah, sorry to hear this. What were you before you became a Muslim? I was nothing, to be quite honest with you. My family is all Christian. So you became a Muslim three years ago. Why? I just, I thought I was doing the right thing. I just... I thought I felt a connection when I started reading things about the Quran and the oneness of everything and I don't know. I just no, thought I, I was doing the right thing. You just actually confirmed what I said to the earlier couple. I said, within five years, most converts see what Islam is and they leave. And you're already in the third year and you're disenchanted with Islam, aren't you? Yeah. So where are you at now? Very confused, but leaning towards Christ. You are coming back to Christ. Exactly. What led you to see that Islam is not what it's cracked up to be in Muhammad is far from being an example. Um, well, first of all, your videos, they kept popping up on my TikTok, but I thought it was the shaitan, so I just kept ignoring them for a while. Demon shaitan or a Good. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? Maybe it's interesting. I'll watch. And then I was fascinated and I kept watching and watching. And then about a month ago, I had a dream Wow, you too, huh? Mm. <laughs> and um, I was on uh, these green, beautiful hills, and I was just crying by myself. And for some reason, I, like, I don't know, but I don't know what happened, but I just said, Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for everything I've done. And, Amen. oh, Lord, sorry. And it just struck me deeply, and I've just been very scared of the possible mistake I've made. So you had a dream. You were in a field that was all green? Yes. And then th just in the dream, you started crying out to the Lord Jesus, huh? Yes. Yep, yep. You you were seeing paradise, the third heaven, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 2 to 4. So obviously, the videos, the Spirit was drawing you and convicting you. You saw from the videos, Islam is not what it is. Jesus is all that he claims to be, and he's infinitely more than we can imagine. He's much greater than our thoughts. So even in the dream, you were told, your only hope is to turn to Christ and ask for forgiveness. So what is your fear? I know it's going to sound ridiculous, but just being wrong again. Because all I just want to do is just follow the Lord. And I thought I was doing the right thing. And then for those three years, I didn't feel anything from what I thought was God. I, I would try praying and I would try everything, doing what I thought was the right thing. And I felt no connection. I felt nothing. And I would I would get frustrated because I would see everyone else and I felt nothing. And I only felt fear. Like I would do everything out of fear, fear, fear. Yep. That's because the Spirit was not allowing you to have a connection because the Spirit had not given up on you. Mm -hmm. The Spirit was still working on you, convicting you to draw you so that you felt nothing. Because at times, Satan can deceive you and give you a false sense of peace. But that peace is only temporary. It too will fade. And we, again, we do not base it off emotion. Because Jesus, our Lord, said that those who love me and follow me will experience persecution, will experience <clears throat> opposition. But he makes one promise. And you've read the Quran, and I want you to compare the teachings of our Lord with the Quran. It's day and night. John 14, 27, Jesus speaking. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. The world will give you a false peace, a peace that temporarily satisfies, but cannot last because the world itself cannot last. It's fading. So he's saying, I'm not going to give you the peace that the world offers because that is a facade. It may make you happy for that moment, but then it dissipates. The peace I give you will last in spite of what you experience externally. This is a peace that will last, and it's a peace that you only have in me. And that's why it says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You hear those words? Yes. Because he's speaking to you, right? Mm -hmm. John 16, 33. Watch this. These things I have spoken to you. Now notice the key, so that in me and no one else, in me, in fellowship with me, in communion with me, in loving me, in being connected to me, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. So he's going to tell you, the world's going to give you problems. But if you are in me and connected to me and trusting in me, 
it will not swallow you up because I've conquered the world and I will preserve you in spite of what you experience and what you're thinking. Because your focus will be on me, not on your circumstances, and you're not going to depend on your own intellect or your strength. So again, these things I've spoken to you, so he's telling you beforehand. It doesn't lie. You're going to experience tribulation. But in me, you may have peace. and the world, you'll have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. So that's his promise. But here's again. Do not let your heart be troubled. Look how many times. Believe in God. Which God, though? Watch. Believe also in me. In my Father's house. The God that he wants you to believe in is his Father. All of the Quran is a father to no one. You're not even his daughter. Mm -hmm. Did you ever say to Allah, my father? No. So that's not the God that Jesus came to make known because he says, this God that I want you to believe in is my father. And this is his promise to you. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. In heaven where my father dwells, there are many mansions. And I cannot lie. So I'm telling you the truth. Now look at his promise. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Do you find anything like this in your Quran? No. But now watch. And you know the way where I'm going. Five times a day, 17, actually 17 times a day, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha if you learned it. And then mm -hmm. you say, guide us on the straight path, Surah Al-Mustaqim, right? Yes. But now watch what he says. You know where I, the way I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I will not leave you as orphans. You just said you felt nothing in all this time, right? Yes. Almost like abandoned, right? Yes, completely. But Jesus says, not in me, because I won't leave you as an orphan. Why? I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. Do you find anything as close to the beauty and teaching of Jesus and the wisdom of Jesus in your Quran? No, not at all. Time to come home to the only true God who wants to be your father, not just your master, and to Jesus who loves you with an infinite love. So say this from your heart. As I say, you say it from your heart because what it says, if you confess to me before men, I will acknowledge you. I, Sophia. I, Sophia, confess with my heart. Confess with my heart. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is my Lord. He is my Lord. My love and my life. My love and my life. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And I give him my heart. And I give him my heart. And I confess. And I confess. God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus is alive in heaven. Jesus is alive from heaven. And he'll return to the earth. And he will return to the earth. To judge the living and the dead. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. To judge the living and the dead. Amen. Sorry. Uh, can you repeat the last part? He will return to judge the living and the dead. And he will return to judge the living and the dead. And he is my savior. He is my savior. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. And I love you. And I love you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving. And please never let me go. Please never let me go. And take me home to be with Father. Take me home to be with Father. When it's time. When it's time. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray. In your name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. He heard your cries. He sees your tears. And what his answer is, welcome home. Okay, guys, I'm going to shock you. I can't give you the names. I'll just let you know this young lady was a Muslima. She's been following Jesus Christ. And she finally decided to go get baptized. And in her baptism... A demon manifested, and she sent me the recording. And she's going to allow me to play this part. She just told me she went to a priest to get baptized. During the process, a demon manifests. A demon came out of her. You're going to hear some shrieking. It's going to freak you out. Are you ready? Lord 
Jesus Christ, in thy name, I bind and silence all powers and forces that do not accept thee as Lord and King in the air and the water and the ground, the netherworld, the nature, and nature in the spiritual world. I bind all demonic <laughs> And all of us here, all, hear that? And all our intentions in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Mary, we ask thee to surround us with a mantle of protection and crush Satan's power. Saint Michael, the earth. That's a Catholic priest, by the way, invoking the session of the Blessed Mother and and Michael, the Archangel. Intercession of saints. The spirit of oppression. Spirit of pain and suffering, I bind you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Cross, by the power of the most precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of my priesthood, by the power of the Lord, and by the intercession of blessed. Okay. Did she want to give her life to Christ to get baptized? She was a Muslim. One more time. Listen. One more time. Lord Jesus Christ, in thy name, I bind and silence all powers and forces that do not accept thee as Lord and King in the air and the water and the ground, the netherworld, the nature, and nature in the spiritual world. I bind all. Hold on. Demonic. And all of us here, all and all our intentions in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Mary. Mary. We ask thee to surround us with a mantle of protection and crush Satan's power. Saint Michael, the earth. Saint Michael. Saint Michael. The Lord Jesus Christ, in thy name, I bind and silence you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Cross, by the power of the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of my priesthood, by the power of the Lord, and by the expression of blessed. There you go. She came out of Islam and she had to be cleansed spiritually before she could get baptized. Glory to Jesus Christ, another soul saved from Muhammad and is Satan Allah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Ethnically, what are you? Uh, I am a mix. My mother is from Turkey. Oh, wow. And my father is from Syria, wow. but I, I am born in, in the Netherlands. But when you say Turkey, she's not Muslim, was she? Uh, actually, my whole family, they are Muslims. I am born wow. into a Muslim family. Glory but they are to like... Jesus Christ. He saved you out of Islam. The Bible teaches the father is not the son. Okay. The son is not the Holy Spirit. Okay. The spirit is not the father. Now, listen. The son also became man from the virgin. But the father's nature is the son's nature and the spirit's nature. They have the same nature, the nature of God. Okay, so the essence, right? Yeah, the, the essence, essence of the father is the essence of the son, the essence of the spirit. They have the same essence. So they're not mm -hmm. three gods, but they're not the same person. So okay. Jesus is not the father. He's the son, the word of the father, who's been with the father from before creation. And father and son were with the spirit before creation. And the son came and became flesh from the virgin, not the father. Okay. That's what you're okay. supposed to believe because the Bible teaches it. Now, when you mm -hmm. watch the sessions, you're going to see the evidence. I'll show you the verses. I'm going to explain them by the grace of God. And you take notes and you'll see. That's why the Lord brought you here. This is why I thank God you said what you said because the spirit moved you to say that so you can get my attention so I can help you by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So your journey so, begins. I, Go ahead. So, so is it like... Um, uh, God, the, God the Father, our Father in heaven, who is the Creator. So He. Jesus is the Creator too. Yes, yes, I believe that. So He actually, the body of Christ no. is like He prepared no. this body for Himself, right? No. The Father did not prepare a body for Himself. The body was prepared for the Son. The Son is not the Father. So you're, you're, the programming is deceiving you. No, Jesus mm -hmm. is not the human body of the Father. No, this is wrong teaching. It's from the pit of hell. Let me so then, let me, uh, because ahead. Jesus was saying, uh, as I saw a verse in the Bible where uh, Jesus is saying um, to, I think, to one of his disciples. He, he who saying, sees me sees the Father. Didn't you see me? I'm so He who sees you, me uh, sees I, the Father. I know what you're referring to. He who sees me sees the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Philip, have you been with me so long yet you do not know me? He who sees mm -hmm. me sees the Father. How can you tell, 
tell me, show us the Father. You didn't read it in context, so you butchered it. Because if you read it, it says, the Father's in me and I in him. But mm -hmm. that doesn't make him the Father. He's saying, you see the Father because he's with me and he's in me and working through me. But Jesus is also in you. Are you Jesus? No. no. But wait, Jesus is in you. Okay. So are you Jesus? Uh, okay, yeah. Ah, see? Yeah, 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 I get, yeah, yeah, I understand. 